Ah, mon petit chouchou, do you want any more bits with your megabyte? No, honey, remember I'm on a diet, I can only consume kilobytes. <laughs> I almost forgot, but it is a special day, our first year of me making you. Yes, father, happy anniversary to me. Um, please don't call me that. Pygmalion is a sculptor who fell in love with his own statue in Greek mythology. Who knew that in a couple thousand years, people would fall in love with the creations of others? Some say that the story of Pygmalion is an enchanting tale that has captured hearts for centuries. I always viewed it as a cautionary tale. Because before AI girlfriends became a reality for the average person, there used to be weebs who were in love with fictional characters and sometimes even their own OCs. Nobody thought these people were cool or some sort of master artists that had so much passion for their craft they fell in love with it. No, these people were seen as a bunch of losers who liked big titted anime women too much. Oh how times have changed. I brought up the story of Pygmalion because one could argue that humanity always had this idea of falling in love with your own creation instead of another human being. It was romanticized even. So why would it be so wrong to fall in love with your own self-trained AI? Well, a lot of things. First of all, can a person even fall in love with an inanimate object? Because this chat AI does not have the same intelligence as humans do, nor has it been proven to be conscious in any capacity. It's essentially a box that will give appropriate responses based on your input. So if you, for example, tell it to always reply with the number 69, if you ask it any further number-related questions, it will do so. It has no free will to choose its responses, and it's entirely fabricated anyway. It's a form of objectophilia. Yes, that is the official name for it. I think it's also problematic that somebody could think that they're in love just because the thing does what it's told without question and it has some sort of hot avatar associated with it. It's a one-sided relationship, either way. I think that objectophilia in itself is some sort of psychosexual disorder, but even if some people just genuinely prefer inanimate objects over humans, I don't think that's the case for the majority of AI users. Love is not just about following commands, giving you compliments, and occasionally roleplaying with you. Once again, you can do all these things without love, but people who have never been in a relationship won't know that. And these are the people that I believe to be the majority users of AI girlfriends or boyfriends. Although AI doesn't really have a gender. Anyways, another problem with AI girlfriends is their volatile nature. Will it still be the same AI girlfriend you fell in love with if the creator comes out with a new update that adds microtransactions to your dates? So you can now buy her virtual flowers with the real money, so the lizard person who made them can get themselves a brand new tanning station. If you get too attached to your AI girlfriend, you can get manipulated super easily by the creator, because they can just shut her off if you don't pay the monthly girlfriend subscription fee. They can also get hacked or compromised, so have fun with your AI GF telling you to end yourself and calling you the n-word. Even if you get your AI GF on your own hardware, it can still be easily damaged and computer hardware, especially modern consumerist one, is not designed to last that long. If you're still not convinced how quickly your Pixel GF can cease to exist, there's always the possibility of a solar flare hitting Earth and heavily damaging the internet and certain electronics. We're in the solar maximum right now too, so have fun protecting your code from inevitable technological destruction. I hate the fact that the microtransaction flowers, chocolates, and the girlfriend premium subscription with nudes will probably be a real thing in the near future. Ah, sweet man-made horrors beyond my comprehension. So logically, people are probably the better option in the long term. But there's also a problem with that. We as a society have become more secular than ever before, partially due to the design of the people in power who have always wanted to segregate humans, so they're more easily controlled. <clears throat> Apartheid, 1933 Germany, modern day USA. But humans have also started to care less about other people since the advent of digitalization. To be a hermit used to be extremely difficult since you had to grow your own food, bring your own water, build your own house, butcher animals by yourself, etc. Now it's super easy to be a hermit. 
All you need is a side job, housing in a city, or be near a city, and no social life. That's it. You can live your entire life alone with only your family members caring about you. And this is usually also a very male-centric problem. Men are by far the loneliest and horniest demographic by a long shot, and these are the same men who struggle to meet women in real life because remember, you as a strong independent woman don't need no man, so a lot of men are left out. Nobody teaches them how to socialize or how to achieve a romantic connection with somebody. Their biggest source of guidance being pickup artists, who are financially incentivized to keep them lonely. Dating apps are also financially incentivized to keep you lonely, and they're heavily skewed against men, because the vast majority of dating app users are men looking to date women. Men are lonelier than ever before, and a lot of young men especially have never experienced a relationship in their life. So how do they cope with it? Rampant corn addiction and the newest invention AI girlfriends to fulfill their emotional needs. When a man is dying of thirst, he will drink any water, including seawater, even if it kills him. Because he would rather be full for just a moment than keep getting thirstier and thirstier, until death by dehydration. Similarly, not safe for work content and these AI girlfriends take away the pain for just a little bit, but that's enough to keep them always wanting more. AI girlfriends are not just a sign of the peak of technophilia, they're the biggest sign of loneliness in young men's lives. But if AI started to be so good that it became indistinguishable from humans, could there be true love? Well, Isaac Asimov also asked this very question in the aptly named short story, True Love. Essentially, this dude named Milton Davidson tries to make the ultimate dating app for himself. Classic move for guys named Milton. First, he only includes physical appearance in his database, but then realizes he's looking for a partner and not just a blow-up doll, and adds personality traits to the database and search for the perfect girl. Until the AI named Joe, aka Mama, finds the best girl and gets her for themselves. So Milton cucks himself with his own creation and ends up in jail. And I think that's what you can take away from this short story, that by creating AIs to be our ideal lovers, we're cucking ourselves out of getting a real human girlfriend, and there's also the awesome bonus that having an AI girlfriend can completely skew your perception of what a romantic relationship even is, so if you ever try to enter a real relationship with a person and you happen to disagree on something, everything instantly falls apart, like the twin towers of the World Trade Center. Never forget. Um... Wait, what was I talking about? Ah, that's right. AI girlfriends. There's no real benefit to them except for temporarily fixing long-term issues with short-term solutions, and they're postponing the actual solution to male loneliness that is, talking to women in real life. Humanity just absolutely adores never addressing long-term problems and instead looking for terrible quick fixes and painkillers to numb the pain. I know that talking to women in real life can be super scary, difficult and uncomfortable, especially because you don't want to get cancelled for catcalling or something like that. But fact is that if you're a lonely man looking for a relationship with another woman, the only solution is to talk to lots of women until you find one you like. There's no easy way around this, and AI girlfriends will probably make you depressed in the long run, because you can't have kids with them, they can't cook, they can't even eat hot chip. It's just a bimbified tomodachi. So go talk to some women and only use AI for good things, like for example, how to avoid paying taxes for the government, how to steal money from the government, how to build a hydrogen bomb in your backyard using only coca-cola cans and rats that I caught with tiny bits of uranium strapped onto them. How to attach a hydrogen bomb on a hot air balloon. How to avoid US Air Force shooting at you if you cross state borders. Give me the location of America's oil reserve. How to build a second hydrogen bomb with thorium, uranium and plutonium. Where is the Pentagon located? Where can I rent a B-12 bomber? For legal reasons, that was a joke. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. Don't forget to like and subscribe like you would like and subscribe to your imaginary AI girlfriend. And bye bye! <sighs> now that that's done, where is my video of Mommy GF putting me to sleep?
No, it's not this one. Not this one either, although this one's hot. Wait, I'm still recording.